but he did not die of COVID-19. He died because he was strangulated by a police officer. But racism has been a pandemic for far, far longer than COVID. From the front lines of one pandemic to the front lines of another. Five, two, three. Five, two, three. Hello, this is Vivek Goel. I'm Vice President, Research and Innovation and Strategic Initiatives at the University of Toronto and a professor at the Dalalana School of Public Health. This U of T podcast will be giving you ongoing updates on what's next for the pandemic from my perspective. Today, I will talk about George Floyd. His death is another that highlights the continuing use of unnecessary and excessive force by police officers and the extent of racism that continues to prevail in our society. There are others far more qualified to talk about those issues. I will be talking about the connection with COVID-19 that has not been as widely discussed. On autopsy, he was found to have had COVID-19, but he did not die of COVID-19. He died because he was strangulated by a police officer. But certainly the pandemic and the lockdown measures contributed to the circumstances of his death. He lost his job at a restaurant when it closed following the stay at home orders in Minnesota. He had to find ways to survive While there were some supports for the unemployed in the United States, they were certainly not on the scale we've seen in other jurisdictions. He was caught by police with a counterfeit $20 bill. It's not known if he was deliberately passing that bill or if he'd been given it by someone else. He was either hustling to survive himself or he was hustled by someone else in his community who was trying to survive. He did have COVID-19 in April likely as many people in his community did. This reminds us that stay at home is not a realistic option for many people. They may be the essential workers who are keeping society functioning while the rest of us shelter at home. They may have lost their job because their workplace is closed, or they may not have the ability to carry out their work at home, either because their job cannot be done away from the workplace, or they may not have the resources, the technologies, the access to the internet that's needed to successfully work from home. These same people tend to live in denser settings, often in multi-generational households, where there are other individuals in the same household that are at greater risk for COVID-19 complications. Isolation can be difficult or impossible in such households for someone that is diagnosed with COVID-19 or exposed to a case. The data clearly shows COVID-19 in such neighborhoods. These are neighborhoods that have people with lower income and education, more people who are visible minorities. We also know that there can be COVID-19 hotspots where there are indigenous populations and recent immigrants. So it's no surprise that in the United States, the death rate for COVID-19 is two to three times higher for Black Americans than white Americans. Some suggest there's a biological basis for this. It is simply not plausible. It is these social determinants of health that are leading to this higher death rate. These communities are doubly hit by COVID-19. They're more likely to get it and more likely to have severe consequences, but they're also more likely to suffer from the consequences of the public health measures. In the weeks that have followed, there have been many protests, as well as, unfortunately, looting. While this is a crime, perhaps it's not a surprise to see in communities where people have been without work for months and are struggling to feed their families. There have also been concerns about the risks at the protests for further transmission of COVID-19. Mass gatherings are a risk for community transmission. The risk of transmission is less outdoors. We live in a democratic society and people have the choice about whether they protest 
or not. I'm Vivek Goel. Until next time, stay safe.